Well, hello, Andre. Hey, Gary. It's nice to see you. Um, I want to thank you for for spending some time with us today because you've had an experience that I think everybody should should or could learn from. And I'm going to call it a spiritual experience. And you, as a member of our, you know, our, our, mem- our membership and, and, you know, an advanced student in optimal EFT, et cetera, you had this experience and you started it off with, oh, my God. Okay. Mm-hmm. Those are your first words, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I want to give a little kind of a summary up front, a little preamble, so our listeners would get a good sense of of where we're going and what's possible here. There are many people in this world who have had near-death experiences, spiritual experiences, visits, if you will, with the, the spiritual dimension. Uh, we call that the unseen therapist, you know, with our optimal EFT. Mm-hmm. And while it's a very small percentage, there, there happens to be thousands of them on the internet, etc. You're one of our members to have that. And that's what Oh My God is all about. And we're going to unfold all that here for for everyone. I'll be asking you some questions and, and stuff like that so we can give everybody a good sense of what's possible here. But just as sort of a forerunner to all this, um, you said something like, what did you say here? I'm still trying to wrap my head around it uh, is one thing. But there's, there's all kinds of wows in here. <laughs> now, 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 now you have had other experiences with unseen therapists in that you have a very long list of serious issues that have been resolved with unseen therapists, correct? Yes, dozens, actually. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, and not just little bitty things. OCD just left, okay? John, yeah. Uh, Heart uticaria, heat uticaria, mm-hmm. left, yes. and on um, and on. I mean, and there's a long list. Mm-hmm. But, and you've recognized unseen therapists' presence along the way. I'm saying that right? Absolutely. There's no way these things could have taken place without her. Yeah, okay. But you've noticed the presence in, maybe not a spiritual experience, but you've noticed the presence. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, for those listening in, especially our our members, not everybody notices. I don't, for example, when I'm using unseen therapist, notice these things. I've had one grand spiritual experience some time ago, 1988, actually, um, and it, it gets your attention, um, mm-hmm. as you as you know. But I don't, in the everyday use of all of, it, of our technique and the unseen therapist and healing and all of that, I don't, I don't get what you got. So I'm jealous. Okay. <laughs> well, I but I I see her. You know, I mean, I, I in my mind I see her, and I mean she's she's an actual an actual being. Yeah. Okay. It's not just a, a voice or a presence. Well, we'll 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 talk we'll talk about that. We'll talk about mm-hmm. that. Uh, not everybody does that. That doesn't mean this is what I want to. This is what I want to really conclude with this part of it. With that doesn't mean just because somebody is not having this experience or any other kind of direct experience with unseen therapists, it doesn't mean she's not working. It you know in the background. It doesn't mean she's not helping us. It doesn't mean we're not healing. Uh, so many people think, oh my God, we're gonna. Talk to God or the unseen therapist or the spiritual dimension. I've got to do this right or it's going to fail. Uh, no, no. So and I thought anyway. that at the at the very outset too, because if I don't do this right, I'm going to get nothing. And that's yeah. what I that I yeah. and and that was never ever the case. Yeah. Okay. So I really want to emphasize that this is the kind of thing any student can get. It doesn't mean yeah. they will get it, but it also doesn't mean unseen therapist isn't working in the background because we're calling on it. You're just not noticing something. It's like it's like when you take when you if you have a headache 
you swallow an aspirin. The only way you know it worked is, well, after a little time goes by, you know, the headache is better. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the same thing here. You can do, the, you can turn things over to the unseen therapist, you know, an emotional issue, a physical issue, all kinds of different stuff. And um, even though you don't notice anything, just like you don't notice anything once you swallow the aspirin, you don't get, you know, warm feelings and, and, uh, bells and whistles and harps and angels and <laughs> all of that. Right. If you pay attention to what's going on, your OCD goes away. Okay. And mm -hmm. as an example. So anyway, anyway, let's, uh, with that little stuff in there, you had a experience which lasted around 12 hours. You were telling me. Yes, pretty all much. Right. So let's start it off. You, you wrote you wrote this to me. You said, "As you know, I'm a catastrophe." <laughs> How do you say that? Catastrophizer. A catastrophizer. That is, you're always looking for the worst. <laughs> yeah. Sort of thing. And so and so, your partner, your partner William, had to go for a medical exam of some kind or other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. left and. And you catastrophized it. And uh, as I always do, I, right. I immediately went to cancer or, you know, I, I, I don't even remember what it was he was going to see a uh, doctor about, but yeah, it was going to be cancer and that was going to be something that was going to kill him and this was going to be it. And yeah. that's the way it always is with me. Um, so when, you, yeah. So you, you, you have learned in cases like this to, Bring in unseen therapists. Somehow you need calming down. You need guidance. You need yeah. something. So talk about what happened. Well, um, as soon as he left, um, I went upstairs to my bedroom and I lay down. And it was very, it was very cool because um, in that particular instance, I had to go to my loving moment for a second and then she was there. So I was, so there was no sort of tuning into it or anything. Well, let and, me inter interject one thing for the listening audience. Not everybody knows what a loving moment is, but it's sort of a, a, a beginning part of a session we do with unseen therapists. You just right. get yourself into a loving moment in your past, but go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. And so she was right there. And I, but I also felt the loving moment uh, with a kind of intensity I've never, never felt before. It was just completely, completely enveloped me. And, and it, and, and that same feeling stayed with me for hours and hours afterwards. And so I asked her a question immediately. Um, I, I didn't really finish it. I, I, I said, what am I doing? And I, th I think it was meant to say, um, I, I meant to say, what am I doing to myself? Why am I, you know, putting myself in this situation for no reason uh, if, 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 of anxiety? And she said, um, you're doing just fine. And uh, William will, will be just fine. And you don't need to worry. You don't need to worry about him. He's, he's going to be fine. And she was right. Um, but I, I still felt the intensity of the loving moment. And it felt... Uh, sort of clean and pure and white. And um, it felt like it was vibrating inside me. It was, it was really quite remarkable. And um, then I said to her, um, so I was, I was calm about William at that point. And so I, I said, uh, so, and she's, she's leading me by this point. And so she said, you know, you've been ruminating about people a lot. And we can work on that if you want. No, she didn't. She said we can work on that. And so I started saying um, names of people who had disappointed or hurt or made me angry. And she just, and this has never happened before. She said, okay, squash that. What? And squash, squash that. Squash meaning, that. Meaning you mentioned somebody's name and she'd yeah. say squash. But what does squash All that the, mean? All the feelings that went along with that person, squash that. That was what that was. Like just okay, that's fine. And I imagine myself squashing the person. Well, let me let me ask you. Let me ask you. 
Mm -hmm. Was that just sort of academic advice? Oh, well, just leave that one be. Or did she help you squash it? Yeah, she, uh, she helped me. Well, she helped me because I was able to. Um, and so, yeah. And well, so then, yeah. But wait, let, 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 sorry for interrupting. But that, no, you're not. I, I really want to get get to that, okay? Because oftentimes when we have an old time resentment, which everybody has, we have several <laughs> and so on. It's just pretty hard to avoid in this world. Mm -hmm. um, letting go of those resentments um, isn't a sort of a oh well, you don't need that anymore, so just let it go. I mean, that, that'd be nice, but that's just a conversation piece, okay? But what right. you're telling me is her squash it was indeed, don't let me impose words on you. Change me if I don't have it right, okay? Mm -hmm. But squashing it, she actually assisted you in squashing it so that you have, would you say, less resentment? No resentment? Minimal? Well, uh, what would you say? Well, I, I can't tell you because um, we, we went through five people. And so I mentioned another name. And she said, okay, squash that one too. And I said, and then another name. And she said, let's do another. And so we did another. She said, squash that. You don't need that one anymore. And so we got through all five of them. And then I started thinking about the, the anger or hurt or disappointment that, the people, that these people had represented in my mind. And I was having trouble focusing on it. I couldn't, I could remember the events that happened, but they weren't affecting me the way they did seconds earlier. Um, my words for that sometimes are the, the sting, the intensity is gone. The memory is there, mm -hmm. but, but the, the anger, the resentment, the, it's either way, way down or it doesn't matter anymore or, Am I, am I, am I on, on target here? That's exactly what it was. Um, and, and I'm still, I mean, I, I, I can remember. And I, I think that there's no such thing as forgive and forget. You can forgive, but you never really forget what, what happened. Yeah. Like, it, it, you, just, you, you just don't. But it's great if you can forgive. Um, and so I was... I don't know if I've got the forgiven point, forgiving forgiveness point, but what I've gotten to is a point where it's not really those things, those those things and those people aren't bothering me anymore. Yeah. Okay. All right. To the same extent, because again, it's still there. It's just not at that intensity. It might instead of whereas before it might have been a nine or a ten, it now might be a one or a two. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. So. Um, I just have some notes here because I want to remember everything. Um, I found that I was, um, I want to reiterate that it was, it was really powerful. The loving moment was, was um, best described as a combination of warmth and excitement and, and, and pleasure. So it was, and it was just, and it was not just right here in my heart. It was like my entire, upper body um and so it was just a just a really lovely feeling and uh, then she she said something that i've never asked about and she like she brought it up and she i don't know any people who don't know this i had a liver transplant almost two years ago and um, there's always a chance that my body might say, okay, we're, we don't want this anymore, and it could go. And so that's always something that's in the back of my mind, but I've never... Meaning your body uh, would reject the liver and, yes. and... Okay, all right. And I would I would have to perhaps get another one or just not... or die. Yeah. So it's, you know, something that's been in on my mind, um, but not... I mean, you, you can't live your life that way in fear, worrying about something that may or may not happen. But anyway, um, she said to me, your liver is going to last your lifetime and it will be a long life. <laughs> and I you, said, you, you asked a question like how long, I, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I said, okay. So how long? <laughs> and she said, that would spoil the surprise, but it will be long. Now, let me ask you something about that. 
Did you buy it? Do you yeah. are you skeptical about it? You say, well, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I'm persuaded that way. Thank you, but we shall see. I mean, what is your take no, on? No, I'm. Uh, you know, of course, that, that doesn't give me a license to become reckless now. And uh, but I believe what she said because why would she say it if it weren't the case? Okay. Now, the reason I ask you that, because that gets into something that's really important for for students to see, this, the spiritual essence, our unseen therapists, God for some people, Allah for some of them, that we're engaging here, um, is a lot more prevalent than we think. We're just not allowing it. We're not tuning into it. But it's, in fact, our real reality. And one of the things that we move towards with our course, our optimal EFT course and teachings and so on revolves around the word trust. And see this spiritual essence, the unseen therapist isn't just some person that shows up, you know, across your desk. It's, it's an experience. And it's not the normal everyday experience we have. So we quite naturally have a little difficult time trusting it. Even when it's right on, sometimes we can, we can oftentimes step back and say, well, lucky this time. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be, put myself in the skeptic's shoes, okay? Sure. But now when it keeps happening and uh, you keep getting positive results, then you start to, your skepticism goes from here down to here and your belief goes up to here. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's what I, that's a really important message here. Cause this didn't just, Oh, all of a sudden you've got a result. Now you, uh, you absolutely trust for all time. No, mm -hmm. you've had a whole series of these and it's yeah. more and more difficult to not trust right. as these things unfold. Mm -hmm. Again, don't let me impose thoughts. No. Okay. I mean, it keeps happening where I have a positive result. I mean, there are still things that I need to work on. There's still things that aren't aren't fixed. But, I mean, I can't expect it all in, you know, to, to happen at one time. I don't think I don't think that happens for anyone. Right. So, yes. So, anyway, I interrupted you a little bit, but please, go ahead. No. Um, and then, of course, we, we moved on from that. And I was, I, I felt great that, Okay, my, my liver is going to last me my lifetime. I mean, and I'm glad you qualified it by saying that your life is going to be long because, I mean, my liver will last me my lifetime, but that could be the end of the month. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, um, but something else, I've been, I've been um, exploring uh, about it, well, three different uh, career paths that I'm I'm considering, and uh, I'm not really sure. But I've, I've been thinking about it over the last few months um, about what it is that I want to do. And um, again, this is something I've never addressed with her or asked for guidance for. But uh, she told me to focus on the one that she knew that I was uh, most passionate about, and she also added that. Um, the money won't be immediate, but it will come. And when it does come, it will come in abundance. Well, that's good news. Oh, I think so too. <laughs> Did you buy that? I buy it. Uh -huh. I mean, why would you, why, okay, I mean, so far, I mean, she hasn't led me down any, any, any paths that aren't. Anyway, um, and I asked her if, um, this is where something absolutely phenomenal happened. Um, I, I asked her um, if she'd be with me as I embarked on this new path. And then she didn't show me or she didn't tell me. Um, and, there, and, and as I said to you in my, in my email, there are a few people that I would tell this to because I want people to believe me. And this is unbelievable, but it isn't to me because it happened. And it isn't to you because you know the power of this. Right. But she showed me how I would know that she was with me. And what she did is she lay down in my body. And my eyes were closed. And in my mind, my body was glowing white. 
and ethereal as she always appears to me. And um, I, I don't know if she left me after that or if she was still there for hours, but I still felt, I still felt her presence for hours afterwards. Now, so mm -hmm. that were you physically lying down at the time she laid down inside your body? Yes. So you were like lying on the bed or something? Yes, I was. Oh, okay. And so she just lies inside you. Mm -hmm. How do you, if you can, if you can, how do you describe the experience of being lying in bed and all of a sudden something called the unseen therapist, this beautiful, loving, spiritual essence of you and me and everybody listening in, lies down inside of you can you can you put more words around that i don't it's in, well it, of course it's never happened before so it's not something that i can i i can describe easily it just felt like a warmth entering entering my body just like i felt warm and loved and secure yeah and there's a parallel to my own spiritual experience one of the even though it was brief compared to yours um there was a sense of ultimate protection there was a sense of nothing could possibly harm you so any anxiety or whatever about being harmed in some fashion it, it was not possible anger resentment guilt and all these other negative emotional type things weren't even possible they weren't even in the vocabulary mm -hmm. now that was my experience is it parallel yours yes i think so i mean i i, I think and I'll, I'll get to this but I, like time had no had no meaning yeah there was no time there was no time and that's hard, was... that's hard to digest for listeners by the way <laughs> because <laughs> Time is everywhere here, okay? But well, yes. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, but I, I'll, and I'll explain that. But um, as I was lying there, um, she said something really just, just, just magnificent, which made me feel, hard as it might be to believe, even better about the experience. She said, um, your loving moment, from 30 years ago, that person thinks of you often and you should know that you're his loving moment also. As, and so this was a romantic partner of 30 years ago. Yes. And yeah, okay. we fell out at the end through uh, interference from other people and it was terrible and it was unpleasant and we haven't spoken since. But I did ask her, I said, because I know where he is. Um, and I asked if I should reach out. And she said, uh, she said, it's best you leave it for now. It will happen, but just not yet. You'll know when it's right, and so will he. So. And, and, and can you suggest what that means? Like, whenever he's ready, he'll phone you maybe? Or it didn't say? Either or, yes. Yeah. Um, it'll happen. We, maybe we have a sort of a, 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 a psychic connection and uh, the time will come where we both think it's a good time to get in touch or I will do it because I'll think because I'll know it's the right time and yeah. he'll be yeah. receptive. He'll be yeah. happy to hear from me. So I believe and so I'm not impatient for it because it will happen because I've been told it has. It will. But the thing that I wanted to explain about time having no meaning, um, it's so hard to describe. I was conscious, but not really. I mean, I wasn't asleep. Um, and it was kind of like I was on a different plane of reality. And um, it was, and, and when I realized that a, a lot of time had elapsed is when uh, like I lay down and William left, or William left, and I lay down. And the next thing I know, I hear him downstairs coming in, coming into the house. 
And I was like, oh, okay, well, how much time has passed? And I, I, my phone was on my, on my bed. I picked it up and looked at it. He left at 9 a.m. and it was 10.08. And I have no concept of, of that 68 minutes having passed. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it, it was, it was I, there was no minutes or seconds. It was just, uh, it was like he had just walked out the door and walked back in, as far yeah. as I, I, I could tell. But a lot, so much had, had transpired. And so it was, and so in any case, um, when I did pick up the phone to check the time, um, there were also on my screen, uh, this is really kind of cool, um, two random tweets um, that just because they, they appear in my feed all the time. And the first one was uh, just simple. It just read, shh let it happen and i thought that is really really cool that that okay and so then the other quote the other one was a quote and it read i'm not afraid of storms for i'm learning how to sail my ship and that was a, a quote by uh, louisa may alcott and so i thought Okay, these are these are so relevant to what has just what has just taken place that this can't be a coincidence. Uh -huh. Maybe one, but not both. Uh -huh. So, and so I got up and went on with my day, but my my chest was still full and it was vibrating and for hours and hours after. So, um, and I don't think that I've. I doubt that I've ever felt at least i don't remember that i've ever felt peace like that yeah the way you describe vibration you need to say the word peace because it was a really good vibration it wasn't yes. you know it wasn't a, a nervous vibration for no. example or it was anxious sort of like, or something it was just sort of like you know yeah yeah it was it, actually i guess if i could, could equate it i have cats when a cat purrs on your on your chest, when they when yeah, they lie on yeah. your chest and they yes. purr, that's the feeling. Just sort of a, a lovely, sort of gentle vibration like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Marvel. Anything else you want to uh, add to that? Uh, just no. I mean, uh, I'm I'm excited for the next time. <laughs> I hope it comes. Sure. Um, but and but I think I'm not waiting for the intensity of, of, of that one. That would be great. But even if I get little snippets now and again, that would be magnificent. Just just the same. Sure. So. Wouldn't it be nice to have one a day and then have that one a well. day just be a perpetual <laughs> way of being, which, by the way, is possible. We're ever getting there with our optimal EFT course. You got accelerated in this. That's why I wanted people to understand what's possible. But again, I want to reiterate, just because one doesn't get that doesn't mean unseen therapy is not working. It doesn't mean you're defective or anything like that. It just means maybe you're not ready for it yet. Maybe, maybe who knows, but mm -hmm. it is possible. And that's the kind of thing. And thank you, Andre, for sharing all of that. It's possible for for everyone. So. Well, I think that I've said in the past when we've done one of these that even if my participation helps even one person, you know, believe that this is possible or what is possible, then I'm happy to share any, yeah. share, share anything that, that happens with me with this anytime you'd like. Okay. All right. Well, with that in mind, Andre, a great big thank you for that. I hope that helps everyone um, in, in your own ways out there. So with that in mind, we'll, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.